Matt trying to come up with when graduation can still happen and how we can kind of just just survive this time and flourish the best we can, which is, you know, part of the education of life anyway, of, of when obstacles come, how do we cope with those? And it's so wonderful to see so many incredible examples. Absolutely. Um, before I move on, um, and I'm sorry, I'm going to interrupt the board comments to go to the student representative. Um, Adrian, I did see him on there. Now I do not see him. There he is. Adrian, if you'd like to give us an update um, from you, that would be great. Hi, how's it going, everyone? Uh, so uh, in the past uh, couple of weeks, uh, I've been uh, talking with the leadership class, and we've been avidly trying to uh, kind of raise the morale uh, from the students at the school, try to get something uh, to rally around uh, and just kind of, because we've kind of been feeling it, we've kind of seen um, that everybody's been a little, I don't know, a little tired. Uh, and if there's good justification from this quarantine. So uh, we came up with the idea of um, what about a graduation parade? So for our graduating seniors, uh, right now, this is in discussion with the PGPD, and uh, we want to get it fully sanctioned with them before we come to you guys for approval. Um, but what we are doing is uh, we have laid it out, and uh, on March 29th, uh, 11 a.m., uh, we would like to have a graduation parade of all of the 2020 graduating seniors. Uh, to be um, in their cars, and then they would go the same route of the uh, Parade of Lights. Oh. And then uh, this would be fully, um, this would stay in the guidelines of the uh, six feet apart at all times. Everyone would wear face masks, and then they would also be in their cars. There's opportunity for people to watch in their cars, and uh, we just wanted uh the seniors to get kind of uh, a hurrah um it would be on the same day of graduation so we just wanted them to uh kind of bring pride uh while during this quarantine wonderful idea that's great and did you say may 29th yes may 29th okay. the original date of graduation perfect thanks Thank yeah. you very much, Adrian. That's a wonderful um, yeah. idea, and I look forward to hearing the updates on that. I'll keep the board updated. And if you need any support from us, please let us know. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we'll go back now to the board. Uh, John Path, board comments? Uh, no, I have no comments this time. Thank you, though. Okay, thank you. Brian Swanson? Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Good. Uh, I just want to thank everybody for hanging in there. I, that's, I know this is really hard, but I think everybody has done a remarkable job. I think that it's been a little harder for me, and I don't know that I can't imagine it's just me to keep our spirits up as we go uh, week after week through all this. So thanks to everybody, and everybody is doing a really a remarkable job. Uh, additionally, um, because I found myself with extra time on my hands. I'm going to post in the chat window a Spotify link that I'm pretty sure I have um, vetted for lyrical content. Uh, so um, if you Spotify, it's there for you. It's called the Swanson Connect the Dots playlist. And um, the game is to try to find the relationship from one song to the next song, to the next song. So if you're finding that you don't have something to do and you are a Spotify user, knock yourself out. <laughs> that sounds fun. I might sign up just for that. Um, John Walton, any board comments? Nothing for me tonight. Okay, thank you. Uh, superintendent report, Dr. Porras. Thank you, Madam President. Actually, I'm uh, I'm going to keep my comments mostly since it's uh, all COVID related to the last item on information. Uh, only other than to just simply, as as other trustees have stated, um, just a, a tremendous sense of gratitude to our entire community for the support that we're giving um, as we try to work our way through this muck. And um, 
I know that uh, it's just been really very difficult for everyone and, and just kudos to the entire staff, teachers, classified administrators, just, just remarkable. So um, there are, are there any other announcements that are really related to that? So I'll, I'll save those for information discussion. Okay, thank you. Okay, we'll have um, now the PGUSD staff comments, not agenda items. Um, so anyone that's already not muted um, would like to speak. If not, you can let um, the moderator know and we can open it up. Is that right, Dr. Porras? I think we're, we're doing it as we did before in the chat room. The and chat we're room? asking if people okay. would please just put the letters PC colon before their comments so that we know it's not just chatter in the chat box, but actually a public comment uh, so that we can have whomever you choose uh, either read it or acknowledge it. Okay, so now this is uh, the staff comments are Correct. open. Any staff would like to um, send a comment, use the chat window and ooh, there you go. Up. She's a fast typist. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so this is um, from Stephanie Lip. Um, I'll go ahead and read it. Uh, staff comments, I would like to extend a huge thank you to administrators and district staff who have helped with meal distribution over the past month. Your consistency is showing up each day to help transport and serve the meals has played a huge part in the success of our daily operation. I would also like to acknowledge and thank my incredible food service team, from the ones preparing the breakfast and lunches, to the ones distributing meals, and to the ones doing their part, staying safe at home and protecting themselves and others. I'm humbled to be working with all of you. You are a fun, dependable team who rolls with the punches of menu changes, vendor, vendor food shortages, weather issues, your, you name it, all while with smiles on your faces. Thank you for the care you put into each meal and continuously looking for ways to better serve community in these challenging and uncertain times. We are all making a positive impact on the community and it certainly does not go unnoticed. May 1st, 2020, is National School Lunch Hero Day, but truly you are all school food heroes every day and it is my absolute pleasure to serve you, serve with you all. Well, thank you very much, um, Director Lip. Um, so I just want to read that date again, May 1st, 2020, which is just next week, I believe, not sure which day a week, um, is National School Lunch Hero Day. Um, Erica Chavez, uh, I would like to thank Summer Co. and her crew for seamstresses for the district staff handmade mask. Oh yes, very much, thank you. Larry from Larry Hadquist. Just wanted to let you all know that information about the parade we have been working on and has been shared with Principal Bell. We are all we are waiting on communication from the PGPD. Thanks for the support for this good cause. Absolutely. Um, we look forward to hearing more about it. Um, for Matt Bell, Felicia Afifi has been doing, has been working with the district auditors for the past week. She has been holding video conferences with the auditor at the end of it all, and we hope it is over. She indicated that the audit went very well and it seemed as though there were very few and small issues to correct for the upcoming year. By the way, um, this is still Matt Bell. By the way, the audit was for ASB and for our sports programs. Thanks, Matt, for that update. Um, Song Chen Bin Dib, um, thank you, Stephanie. The entire food service team and all the administrative volunteers at the daily meal distribution front lines. Sean Roach, a big shout out to Robin Cochran for acting the uh, ACing, excuse me, ACing the attendance audit at PG Middle School. Well done, Robin. Thank you all. Just give a couple seconds for any others. Okay, I'm going to move on to consent agenda. Consent agenda uh, are items considered to be routine and have been discussed at a previous board meeting and there's no discussion of these items prior to the board meeting. Um, 
Each item of the consent agenda approved by the Board of Trustees shall be deemed to have been considered full and adopted as recommended. Are there any um, comments, questions on the consent agenda? Board? Christy? Um, I have a, <laughs> my annual, a, few, a couple of notes on handbooks. Mm -hmm. And um, so I would just like that overall, um, I, I want to make it, a, a, is it okay, Ralph, for me to speak about this right here or no? Uh, it is. Actually, if I may interrupt you for just one moment, um, uh, Madam President, we do have one other item on the agenda, and that's uh, um, public comment, uh, individuals desiring to- Oh, my goodness. The most important one. <laughs> I apologize for interrupting you. Uh, yeah, no, it's okay. Thank you so much. Um, looks like we have a comment already. I apologize, <laughs> you guys. I'm trying to follow along here. and. Um, having a hard time. Um, individuals desiring to address the board. This is public comment on any item interest to the public and within the board's jurisdiction will be heard. The board may limit the comments. I'll kind of summarize this since we're just doing this virtually and um, Brown Act, some of those items are, are lifted a little bit. Um, we'll go ahead and we, we are limited to what we can um, respond to public comment but we are happy to hear any comments that anyone has. So I'll open public comment um, and I'm gonna move right into the first one that we have here already. It's from Rob Cole on behalf of our daughter, Janie, an enthusiastic thank you to Claire, Elise and staff. Thank you, Mr. Cole. Uh, Sarah Chavez, thank you. Then this is public comment. Thank you to Stephanie and her food service team. My children have enjoyed going to pick up lunch. It is an important, an opportunity to get out and have some exercise walking to the high school. It's been very really nice weather lately too, so that's great. Okay, we're just gonna um, keep public comment open for a few more seconds here. Um, this is from Shirts. I'm assuming that's Kim Shirts. Um, just an update on the geography books that were adopted at the last meeting. Um, forgive me if I say this wrong. Sin Sinjaj Singaj has has reissued a 2020 version of the book, so we will be purchasing that in lieu of the 2017 edition. Oh, good. Nice. Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, anyone that's wanting to do public comment in addition, we were, we'll take them and read them um, after the fact. We keep a log of everything, all the chat that, that goes on here. So please feel free to, to do that. Okay, now I apologize for doing this out of order. Now we will go on to the consent agenda. I won't read the whole thing again. Um, we'll just go right into, uh, Christy, you had some questions, comments regarding the handbooks in the consent agenda? I just sure do. Um, uh, the comment I, I, I just want to make is um, I want to make a comment that the middle school had redone their handbook and I thought it was absolutely spectacular. Just Great. done superbly wonderful. And I did make some notes some place there's at one side I'm the prince uh, the president of the board and at another site, uh, Mr. Swanson is the clerk. So there's just some little stuff that I think needs to be looked at. And so obviously I'll be passing this stuff, but I hope those uh, changes and just fixing up grammatical stuff can just be in there, a little, some little stuff. But again, big shout out to the middle school because boy, they revamped it and it is stellar. Really impressive. Great, thank you, Christy. Um, John Paff, any consent agenda item? No, I appreciate the updates on all the handbooks and I appreciate the opening letters on all of them. Um, yeah. Thank you very much for the opportunity, but I think we've re really, the admin has made uh, significant positive changes in the last four or five years on all of them. So thank you all. Thanks, John. Brian, any uh, comments? No, nothing from me. Thank you, Madam President. Okay. John Walton, consent thank agenda? You. Just echo what everyone else said. I have nothing to uh, pull off the agenda, and I think the handbooks are looking better every year. All right, great. 
Um, now I will go ahead and open it up to public comment. If there's any comments or uh, questions regarding the consent agenda. I actually looked around the room for a second to see if I might <laughs> look around your office. Is anybody in there? <laughs> Who am I? Those people in the picture behind you don't start talking. Yeah, true. Um, true. Mr. Tavani and Mr. Roach also um, said thanks for the, the comments, Christy. Good. Um, okay, do I back to the board? Do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? I make a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. Okay, um, that is a motion by John Paff, second by Christy Dawson. Roll call vote, please. Trustee Crandall? Aye. Trustee Dawson? Aye. Trustee Paff? Aye. Trustee Swanson? Aye. Trustee Walton? Aye. Student Advisory? Aye. Okay, thank you. That passes 5-0. Uh, moving on to action discussion. Um, this is the uh, first item is waiver of board policy 6142.4 community service hours for graduation. Um, this um, is in lieu of the uh, COVID um, issue that we're having right now and for uh, the graduates. Um, do, I'm going to go right to the board if you have any questions regarding this. Um, Matt Bell is available if we have any questions. Christy? I, I always think it's one of the most impressive uh, parts of your graduation. And it's such a sad thing with the COVID thing that it can't get all the way accomplished. But of course, it's, it's the nature of the times. But you guys always do such a, a superb job with this. Um, John Paff? Matt, you have five seniors in this circumstance. Uh, are any of them new or are they just uh, not, you know, just didn't do it in the last three and a half years? No, actually, I, I didn't do a, a um, uh, survey to see specifically. I know that there are some of them were only a couple hours away. Um, okay. So the fact that we only had five was actually, to me, stunning uh, with three months to go because there's always a few that put it off to the end. Um, but uh, I don't think there was any that had more than 20 hours left, uh, and so I, I can't answer the rest of that question. That, that's good enough. Thank you very much. Thanks. Okay, Brian? Uh, no, all good here. Thank you. Okay. John Walton? Nothing for me. Okay. Um, thank you. Yeah, that, that is um, an exciting time of the graduation, as there's very many um, of those times but to see all of the um, hours that these students put in, um, all the required amounts, but of course many of them go above and beyond. Um, and I do appreciate us doing this because um, there's just no way that this, they can meet the requirement. Um, with that, I will open this up to public comment. Um, again, please put PC before your comment when you type it. Um, and this item is regarding um, waiving the requirement for the 48 hours of community service hours to graduate from the high school. We just give a few seconds for public comment. Okay, seeing none at the moment. Um, um, I'll make a motion to approve this waiver of board policy 6142.4 community service hours for graduation. Second. Is that John Path? Yes. Thank you. Okay, I have a, a motion by Debbie Crandall, second by John Path. Roll call vote, please. Trustee Crandall? Aye. Trustee Dawson? Yes. Trustee Path? Aye. Trustee Swanson? Aye. Trustee Walton? Aye. Student Advisory? Aye. Thank you. Passes 5-0. Next item is approval of bond oversight committee members. So this, um, uh, Ms. Song, uh, uh, Chin Bid Dib, um, I might ask you to help me out with this one a little bit. Um, this, we have two site committees, correct? 
one. Um, go ahead. Okay, sorry. Um, this is a no. Is a one one site committee that we're gonna ask once the board approve this uh, list. Uh, we're gonna ask these members if they're willing to uh, continue uh, on for two years. The law allows them to have three cycles of two years each. That means altogether all six years. Um, but um, we um, we haven't formed the one for Measure D yet. But the according to bond council, we can once the board has approved this, we can ask them if they're willing to. If not, then we can we'll have to figure out what to do. But this is for just Measure A. Um, for the COC for Measure A. Mm -hmm. And Measure A, um, just for everyone on the, on the meeting, Measure A is for the tech bond, correct? That's correct. Okay, and then there, they would be staying on for the same measure or they would be staying on for the, the new um, facilities bond? We're gonna ask them to stay on for the facilities bond, which is Measure D. Okay, got it, thank you. Um, and I'll go to the board now for any questions about this. Um, Christy? No, I have none, thank you. John Path? No, straightforward, thank you. Thank you. J uh, Brian? No questions, thank you. Okay, John Walton? No questions. No, okay, thank you very much. We'll open this up for public comment. We'll just wait a few seconds on this. Okay, seeing none, do I have a motion to approve this um, one oversight committee member item? I'll, I'll second, I'll second. Okay. Uh, so I have a motion to approve by Christy Dawson, second by Brian Swanson, correct? Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, uh, roll call vote, please. Trustee Crandall? Aye. Trustee Dawson? Aye. Trustee Pash? Aye. Trustee Swanson? Aye. Trustee Walton? Aye. Student Advisory? Aye. Thank you. Passes 5 0. Okay, next item, make sure I'm on track here. This is uh, resolution number 1048, Teacher Appreciation Week and California Day of the Teacher. Um, I, I mean, I don't even know where to start on this. This is um, this is a um, yearly um, item that we celebrate and that we approve. And um, I usually will say it feels very f like a formality, but it's far from a formality. Um, we always appreciate all of the work that the teachers are doing, um, and especially now, um, you guys have just been hung in there and just done a great job. So this week will be a little uh, different than before, but nonetheless, still be appreciated um, as always. And um, I will uh, refer to Billy if you have anything to add. If not, I will go to the board for comments. Um, no, Madam President, um, just I, I think everyone had a chance to read the, the cover sheet and to read a little bit of the um, background and the historical position of how this came to be. Um, and then just that we know um, how important our teachers are to fulfilling the responsibility to educate all children. And as you were saying, Madam President, now, in, now more than ever, I mean, I just think the work of um, of our individual teachers has risen, and it's it's so appreciated and honored even more um, by all of us, by the district, our community, and our state. It's um, it's just incomprehensible that this has happened, and we appreciate appreciate you all so much. If you would like to read, I don't know if you want to read the resolution. Yes, I will read it. Um, yeah, let me um, let me uh, go ahead and read it forward, and then um, I will open up for comments. Um, okay, California Day of the Teacher and Teacher Appreciation Week. Whereas teachers personify our society's belief that universal public education is key to meeting the challenges of a changing world and the influence of a good teacher continues long after school days are only memories. 
And whereas teachers demonstrate and share their love of learning in the classroom every day and fill mm -hmm. many roles and also at home. <laughs> as listeners, explorers, role models, motivators, and mentors, and by doing so, are partners with parents and the community in inspiring students' dreams and laying the foundation for them to be good citizens. And whereas teachers strive to make every classroom an exciting environment where productive and useful learning can take place and each student is encouraged to grow and develop and where teachers reach out to, the fo to foster and well the well-being of each student, regardless of the ability, social or economic background, race, ethnic origin, or religion. And whereas the board does applaud the unique and highly specialized skills and dedication required to meet the varied needs of the young people served by the district's instructional programs and recognizes that the quality of all student education, educational experiences depend significantly and vitally upon the quality of the teachers who are entrusted with fulfilling the mission of education to prepare our students for the future. And now therefore be it resolved, I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to have a drink of water, excuse me. <laughs> I don't think I can make it. <clears throat> Now, therefore, be it resolved by the governing board of Pacific Grove Unified School District that resolution 1048 be adopted to observe May 10th through May 16th as Teacher Appreciation Week, and specifically May 13th, 2020 as California Day of the Teacher, by taking time to remember and salute the teachers who mold and educate our children, impact and enrich our lives, and thereby are critical to the constant and transformation of our society. Thank you so much. That was me. I, 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 yeah, there's I'm not much more that I can say. I just appreciate each and every one of you. Um, I know we have administration day as well, but that includes administration. <laughs> okay, I will open it up to the board for comments, Christy. Yeah, well, what I, I, what keeps dawning on me all the time is here are these teachers who have this whole new way that they have to approach educating their kids, but they have to do it from home. And it's been a long time for me, but the fact that they have kids in their home that they're also trying to parent and educate while they're educating for their job, it's just, it's wondrous. And I just don't think we can say enough. And as you said, Debbie, this year more than any other year it just is it, the words are not enough to express the gratitude the community the board and everybody feels for everything the teachers are doing for the kids and maintaining their own sanity and home thank you john path i i concur with what uh christy just said there R really this is this is a stretch of, of everyone in the teaching profession for sure, and of your students for sure. And thank you all so very much for stepping up um, into a brand new mold, uh, into a brand new system. And uh, the tenor with which uh, teachers have taken this on really give Teacher Appreciation Week a, uh, a new meaning this year. And thank you all so very much. Brian? Um, you know, I I know everybody. They they've all prepped so miraculously well as they enter this profession, and yet I don't think any anybody ever said, "Oh, and by the way, in case this ever happens, we're going to need you to do this too." Yeah. And yet you have, and and again, so miraculously well. There are not words, and and we are living right now through a time where there are not words. So, uh, thank you all for rising to to this occasion that again nobody ever expected, and and yet uh, it's just remarkable. It's miraculous, really. And I wish there were were better words to describe it. Other than uh, just thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Brian. John Walton. Well, uh, there's not much left to say. I think you all said it wonderfully. 
you know, if there's ever a time when we should appreciate the teachers, it's now for sure. And uh, in addition, to just everything and everything they're balancing. You know, the, the other thing that just strikes me is the positive attitude and the Ken and the good spirits that they went into this within a very stressful time and continue to do that. And I, I just want to thank them not just for what they're doing, but for doing it with uh, such grace under pressure, which mm -hmm. is uh, really special. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well said. Um, student, um, and Adrian, did you have anything? I don't put you on the spot, but do you have any comments you'd like to make? Uh, no, I would just like to uh, kind of say the exact same thing that everyone has. Just thank you to the teachers. Uh, from a student perspective, it has been going very uh, smoothly um, in a time where everything has been going a little rough. So uh, just thank you for that. And they're doing a fantastic job. Thank you, Adrian. Okay, so this, this is a resolution. Um, so we don't need a motion. Um, I'll go ahead and do a roll call vote. You want public yeah. comment, Debbie? Is that, oh yeah, is, is that correct though, that we don't need a motion? No, we still will need a motion in a second as well. Okay, okay. Um, thank you, John. Um, I will open it up for public comment. Um, please put the PC before your comment. Okay, I'll bring it back to the board for a motion, please. I move that we accept resolution number 1048, proclaiming California Day of the Teacher and Teacher Appreciation Week. And I'll second. So I have a uh, motion by Christy Dawson, seconded by Debbie Crandall. Roll call vote, please. Trustee Crandall? Aye. Trustee Dawson? Aye. Trustee Path? Aye. Trustee Swanson? Aye. Trustee Walton? Aye. Student Advisory? Aye. Okay, thank you. Passes 5 0. Um, okay, we'll move to resolution, resolution 1049, Classified School Employee Week. Um, this one I'm going to pass to Christy to, uh, to take over on this one. Um, my comment first, though, is, um, you know, we can't do any of what we need to do without the help of the classified school um, employees. I think they, um, and especially now, have been spending a lot of time helping, um, doing extra stuff that they uh, normally might not do, um, even if it's work, if it's not coming in the office. Um, I just think that um, they're so they are essential um, to our school and I very much appreciate each and every one of them um, so um, Christy I'll go ahead and pass this one to you this resolution if you'd like okay. to read it yeah and I agree I think people think of schools they always think of uh, the teachers are kind of the face of education but uh, as in the information and background states, classified staff includes bus drivers, secretaries, clerical, food service, instructional assistants, maintenance personnel, custodians, and others. So it's everybody else that makes that school hum and keeps the district going. And it, uh, I'm very proud today to read the resolution number 1049, com uh, proclaiming classified school employee week. Whereas the legislature of the state of California has declared that May 17th through 23rd, 2020 shall be classified school employee week, a time to recognize the many contributions of classified school employees to public education. And whereas the education of our youth is imperative to our society, to California, to our nation and our world. And whereas our district's classified school employees are skilled personnel who serve our students and play important roles in the establishment and promotion of a positive instructional environment. And whereas our classified staff are dedicated individuals who perform outstanding work and have continued to offer exceptional support for our students, teachers, and administration. Whereas our classified employees deserve rightful recognition and public celebration for their caring, their deeds, and the incalculable 
contributions they have made to California's public education system. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Governing Board of Pacific Grove Unified School District that Resolution 1049 be adopted to observe Classified School Employee Week during the time of May 17th through 23rd, 2020, as an opportunity to acknowledge the achievements and contributions of classified school employees in our system of public education. Thank you, Christy. Um, we'll go ahead and go to board comments. John Path. Yeah, so uh, Debbie, you've already said this, but uh, really, you know, it takes everyone in the system to make, to make this whole thing work. And uh, our classified employees are, are been here and they have the same similar problems dealing with COVID-19 and are working hard to try and uh, make sure our schools are in a, you know, particularly right now are, I don't want to say disinfected, I think that's not quite the right word, but it's pretty close, are, are in a good spot when we do get to open up and uh, are, are functioning well. And really thank you all so very, very much for those efforts. Um, classified School Employee Week in mid, mid May. Uh, really appreciate everybody out there. Thank you. Brian? Uh, echo what uh, John had said. You know, the, we have a remarkable group of people here that are supporting the district in so many ways. And, uh, and boy, have we had our challenges even before this. You know, we have a district uh, with uh, older facilities and those challenges that are presented, and yet everybody continues to rise to the occasion. So, um, thank you so much for everything that you bring uh, during normal times and these very, very strange and unusual times. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. Um, John Walton? Yeah, I, I just want to acknowledge, you know, it, it takes a team. The teachers, obviously, or, or the people uh, that we were talking about that, that have the closest interface with our, with our students and our families. Uh, in my in my day to day job, I guess I would be what you consider classified. And so we do a lot of behind the scenes support. And I just think there's always a lot of unsung heroes, classified staff there at, at PGUSD probably that are doing a lot of things to keep everything running and, and supporting the teachers and making things happen behind the scenes. So. I just think it's great that we're recognizing them as well because they're part of the family and part of the, the reason we're being successful right now. So I just really appreciate what they're doing. Thank you, John. Um, Adrian, did you have anything to add? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I just wanted to thank uh, them for uh, spreading the appreciation to the people who are working behind the scenes as well. It's fantastic. Thank you. Um, I did have a question actually um, for you, Billy. Um, the teacher appreciation week has a specific i mean have a week but they have a specific day of may 13th is there not a day i'm missing it um for the classified they're stating a full week right billy right yes. the classified oh. is a full week the um the teachers have two two things um that that um coincide and a district could um, recognize one or the other, and we recognize both because the day falls within the week. Oh, okay. But classified, um, since 1986, this, it has just been classified um, school employee week. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, thank you everyone for your comments. Um, I will go ahead and open up to public comment um, for the classified school employee week. While we're waiting for that, I, I will go ahead and read the comments that we received um, after the last one. Sean Bulware, thank you educators and all administrators as well. Song Chin Bin Dib, much appreciation to our teachers, counselors, psychologists, and classified staff. I'm gonna go backwards here because Dr. Porras Grace, poise, excellence, grit, and high degree of professionalism equals the PGUSD teachers and classified employees. Shirts, Kim Shirts, thank you to Leslie Tur Turnulo. I should know that by now. She is such an incredible part of our curriculum team. I simply couldn't do my job without her. Leslie T, AKA Superwoman. <laughs> Sean Keller, classified staff rocks. 
All right. All right. Seeing no other public comment, we'll go ahead and bring it back. I have one from Matt Bell. Yesterday was Administrative Assistance Day. We also have incredible administrative assistance. Great. Thank you, Matt. Okay. So I'll go ahead and make a motion on this resolution to approve resolution number 1050, oh, sorry, 1049 to um, approve classified school employee week. Second. Okay, that was John, John Walton? Path. Path. Path, okay. I have a motion by Debbie Crandall, second by John Path. Roll call, please. Trustee Crandall? Aye. Trustee Dawson? Aye. Trustee Path? Aye. Trustee Swanson? Aye. Trustee Walton? Aye. Student Advisory? Aye. Thank you. Passes 5-0. Thank you again to all the um, classified um, employees. And thank you, Billy, for the presentation. Okay, we will move on to resolution number 1050 to approve California OES 130 designation of applicant's agent. Um, I'm gonna ask Matt Kelly if he's on to help out with any questions, but this is- um, wait, I'm wait, on. Dan, thank you. This is a, a COVID related uh, grant, so, so, sort of, right? A grant for emergency management agency from FEMA. Uh, I'll just go ahead and let you tell us what this is. Yeah, it's, it's, um, it's basically the, when the, president declared it a um the california um a disaster zone um he made funds available for reimbursement and um this is the application process to do um to access those those funds the resolution we're, we're already quite a ways down the road in in the application process the resolution really is needs to be in place before we receive the funds and we're probably you know, a couple, well, maybe a couple months away from even receiving the uh, the funds, and it's mostly all going to be reimbursable funds. Okay, um, is there um, an idea what these funds will be spent on? They're already they're funds that have already already or are being spent right now. So um, it's things like um, when we did a lot of the disinfecting and when we purchased a lot of the hand sanitizer. Um, or special ed has purchased um, um, online software and iPads and um, and food service has purchased a couple of things and um, I purchased a few things for barricades. It's all anything that's related to the COVID-19 um, um, epidemic, extra things that we've had to purchase. And, um, and then it's like, it will get reimbursed about 75% of the costs uh, of what we submit. Great. Okay. Thank you. So we passed the resolution and then um, this is good for three years. Is that correct? It is. It's good for three years and it's good for any other disasters that might happen. So, um, and basically all it does is it, it just allows us to, to receive the money. Okay. Well, I sure hope we don't have any more disasters. And I agree. <laughs> yeah. Not for That's a very long time. <laughs> Um, okay, thank you, Matt. Um, I'm going to go ahead and open this up for any other questions from the board. Um, Christy? No questions. Okay, John Path. So, right now it looks like uh, Ralph and, and the superintendent and assistant superintendent are our designees. Matt, are you one of the designees as well? No, I'm only the witness to you guys approving it. It, it was, the directions were really weird. Um, we we kind of discussed this with Dr. Porras and Mandy, um, but it just basically, that last person had to be a witness to the resolution being passed and it couldn't be anyone that was a designee. That includes a board member or Dr. Porras or um, um, our song. Okay, thanks. Nothing else seems odd, but whatever. Yeah, I think so too. The whole thing is odd, so that matches. Uh, Brian, any questions? Nothing here, thank you. Okay, John Walton? No questions. 
I think you said no. no okay, thank yeah. you. Um, okay, um, we'll go ahead and open for public comment on this item. Okay, seeing none right away. Uh, we'll bring back to the board for a motion, please. I move we accept uh, resolution Cal OES 130, the designation of applicant's agent. Okay, I second. Um, and before we go to the vote, um, this is a resolution, but we uh, don't really need to read this one. Is that okay with the board that we don't read it? Yes. yes. Okay, great. Okay, so then um, we have a motion by Christy Dawson, seconded by Debbie Crandall. Roll call, please. Trustee Crandall? Aye. Trustee Dawson? Aye. Trustee Tapp? Aye. Trustee Swanson? Aye. Trustee Walton? Aye. Student Advisory? Aye. Thank you. Uh, passes 5 0. Thank you, Matt. Okay, moving on. The next resolution is number 1051, certifying to the Board of Supervisors of Monterey County all proceed, proceeds, proceedings in the March 3rd, 2020 general obligation bond election. Um, uh, Ms. Uh, Chen Bin Dib, I will go ahead and let you um, explain this one, please. Thank you. Any questions? Okay. Um, so the, this is just a, a procedure thing after election um, for a uh, successful election of a Measure D. Uh, pursuant to Proposition 39, uh, we need to have the board certify the result um, to the county. So it's, it's, uh, the legal <coughs> is to um, certify the, all the proceedings in the for us, the date is March 3rd, 2020, general obligation bond election. And this is a measure D for um, the facilities bond. Uh, okay. That, I'm just open for questions. So this is basically just ratifying the election results. That's correct. Okay, thank you. Um, Christy, any questions? No, thank you. John Path? No questions. Brian? I have none. John Walton? No questions. Okay, um, I'll, I'll go ahead and make a motion to approve this resolution, 1051. Um, Second. Do we need to ask for public comment on oh, this? Oh yes, one? thank you. Public comment is open on this one. This is the uh, resolution to certify the bond that was just approved March 3rd by the voters. Public comment is open, we give it a few seconds. Okay. Um, okay, I will go ahead and make a motion to approve resolution 1051. Um, what, who was that that second? I did, and, and I really want to thank, you know, um, the, the voters of Pacific Grove again for entrusting us uh, with this uh, general, this GEO bond. This is really going to assist, and, and right now more than ever. So thank you all so very much. Yes. yes. Thank you, John. Absolutely. Okay. I have um, a motion by Debbie Crandall, second by John Paff. Roll call, please. Trustee Crandall? Aye. Trustee Dawson? Aye. Trustee Paff? Aye. Trustee Swanson? Aye. Trustee Walton? Aye. Student Advisory? Aye. Thank you. Passes 5-0. Next and last resolution on this agenda is resolution 1052, adopting bylaws governing the Measure D Citizens Oversight Committee. So we, we already talked about this a little bit earlier when we approved the um, members of the uh, Oversight Committee for Measure A. And the, these are the bylaws for Measure D, which is the bond that we just passed. Um, Unless there's anything um, Ms. Chen Bedib would like to add, I'll go ahead and open it up to board comments or questions, um, if there are any. Christy? 
No questions at this time. John Path? I have no questions, thank you. Okay. John, uh, uh, Brian? No questions, thank you. John Walton? No questions. Okay. Um, go ahead and open uh, this up to public comment. Seeing, seeing none at the moment, um, we'll go ahead and bring it back for a motion, please. Debbie? Yes. May I, uh, may I, may I ask a Song a, a quick question? For sure. You know, I, Song, I didn't go back and, uh, and check the prior resolutions. This is, this is largely uh, boilerplate, isn't it? It's, it's identical uh, to prior um, oversight committee. There's nothing new in this? Yeah, so you're correct. It's actually, this is from, from a bond council. Um, yeah. By law, okay. this is just um, standard language. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, thank you, John. Um, and I forgot where we were. We, we I were make a motion voted? to accept resolution 1052, adopting bylaws governing measure use citizens oversight committee. Wow. Uh, yeah. Did we do the... Uh, Wait, I'm sorry, <laughs> I lost track. Uh, John Path made the motion, is that correct? Yes. And second? Dawson. Uh, or Christy. No, Christy did. You got the second, Christy. Okay. <laughs> okay, to confirm for the record, uh, on resolution 1052, uh, a motion to approve by John Path, second by Christy Dawson. Dawson. Um, roll call, please. Trustee Crandall? Aye. Trustee Dawson? Aye. Trustee Paff? Aye. Trustee Swanson? Aye. Trustee Walton? Aye. Student Advisory? Aye. Thank you. Passes 5 0. Okay. Thank you. Uh, next item is approval of memorandum of understanding with Pacific Grove Teachers Association regarding school closures. Um, Doc, uh, actually, Billy, um, if you could speak a little bit about this um, it's so we can get a, a summary and a quick summary and then we'll open it up for questions. Yeah, um, just, just to let everyone know that um, the reason for this MOU and um, why it was negotiated is because due to the um, COVID-19, there uh, there were changes to employees working conditions and so because of that then we um, met with union representatives and um, came to this agreement okay. i think it, and if i remember correctly it ends on june 30th or or when um or the reopening of the schools whichever comes first okay thank you um and I just want to um, say thank you to the Teachers Association for this. Um, it just helps a lot with just having that understanding on both sides. Um, we'll open it up for uh, questions from the board. Christy? None at this time. Thank you. John Path? So uh, there's some things in here that uh, really I, I want to thank the teachers union and when we get to the to the classified union as well, um, that are just, you know, above above where you would normally expect. Uh, we're recognizing flexibility. We should acknowledge this. We're acknowledging that uh, there are remote learning opportunities and that hours might be weird and no one, you know, we know people are putting in the extra time. And at the same time, suddenly if you find yourself with an hour and a half in the middle of the day and want to go for a walk, no one's ever going to blink there either. Really that sort of, um, uh, the, the basic outline of this, which says we're all going to work as best we possibly can under the conditions that have been thrust upon us, um, is really tremendous. And, and thank you to uh, the teachers, and thank you for uh, people putting it together. Yeah. Thank you, John. Um, Brian? Uh, nothing from me. Okay. John Walton? Nothing from me. Okay. I'll, I'll open this up to public comment.
while you're waiting, mm -hmm. <laughs> I have a question for uh, on line 13 here. The only thing I circled is we give 24 hours notice before asking people to come back to the classroom. I think that is uh, at least 144 hours too few. How do we resolve on 24 hours? Dr. Forrest? Well, the, 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 that, that's the timeline that we need to give advance warning. It doesn't say that we won't then add a couple of days for preparation to get here. So I think it's just, we would, we would, in other words, we wouldn't simply just say, oh, and by the way, uh, in three hours, we need you back in the classroom. Okay. I think the idea was that at a minimum, we're saying we're going to need you. But the reality is we're going to, you know. We it's going to be two weeks minimum. But Yeah, well. <laughs> okay. We have one um, public comment from Shannon McCarty. Thank you for working with us on this MOU. And you're welcome. Thank you as well. Um, okay, I'm going to go ahead and bring it back to the board. I'll make a motion to approve the Memorandum of Understanding of Pacific Grove Teachers Association regarding school closures. Second. Okay, okay. Uh, motion made by Debbie Crandall, seconded by John Path. Roll call, please. Trustee Crandall? Aye. Trustee Dawson? Aye. Trustee Path? Aye. Trustee Swanson? Aye. Trustee Walton? Aye. Student Advisory? Aye. Thank you. Pass 5 0. Um, just keep moving on to the next item. This is the same item, um, I believe. I'll ask for clarification for that uh, memorandum of understanding, but this is for the California School Employees Association. Um, Billy, is that correct statement that there is no difference in the understanding? Well, she's Dr. muted. Um, uh, they, well, the, the MOUs are different um, in oh. content, um, but the intent is still the same um, and likewise, as with the teachers, we um, really appreciate the opportunity that we had to discuss this with our our uh, CSEA um, leaders and trying to get a kind of get the get the ball continuing to roll. And um, uh, but the, the intent is the same as Mr. Yeah. Uh, Path has also mentioned. Yeah. So the um, okay, got it. Um, are there any questions from the board, Christy? No, not at this time. Thank you, John Path. So again, thank you to CSEA for, for working hard and for admin and working on this. And I absolutely, you know, having had to do this at my office as well, appreciate that we have put in language that says we're going to do our best to train and make sure that we are uh, uh, CD, uh, well, whatever it is, California Department of Health uh, certified as best, and that's cert not certified, but basically Cal OSHA guidelines, California Department of Health guidelines, and trying to use sanitizers and proper solutions and it's all written down and thank you all so very much for codifying this um, again it's a it's a very trying and interesting time and um, you know everyone's really working hard at it thank you all so very much thank you, John. Brian uh, nothing further from me John Walton okay. um, do I have a motion to approve this one this item Public so comment. moved. Okay. So John Path. Uh, well, I second with public comment if there's any. Oh yeah. <laughs> Thank you for gently reminding me. Okay, I will open up for public comment on the um, California School Employees Association Memorandum of Understanding. Seeing none at the moment, um, we'll bring it back now to the board. Um, I heard, if I'm correct, a uh, motion made by Christy Dawson, seconded by John Path. Yep. Thank you. Um, roll call, please. Trustee Crandall? Aye. Trustee Dawson? Aye. Trustee Path? Aye. Trustee Swanson? Aye. Trustee Walton? Aye. Student Advisory? Aye. Thank you. Pass five zero. Next item is the um, contract for services with Monterey Peninsula Unified School District Nutrition Services for spring break meals. So this is um, obviously this has already happened because this was during spring break. 
Um, and this agreement was made with the Monterey Peninsula Unified School District. Um, I think we all know how the, the meals went. Um, Dr. Porras, did you want to add anything to, to that? Well, I um, thank you, Madam President. I, I, um, I'll go ahead and mention this now. I was going to mention it later, but I, I, um, and I spoke to the administrative team about this earlier today. Number one, um, incredible thanks to, to Director Lip and all of the, um, the classified support staff on this. Um, we, we, we ran into the issue of, of spring break and, and all of us, uh, including the public, felt it was important to continue to, to feed our students and those who needed the support. And um, we were able to figure out how to get that done in large thanks again to Director Lip and um, her connections with uh, MPUSD talk about great leadership. Um, she was able to talk with her former colleagues there and really work out a great uh, situation with the uh, uh, neighboring district and get collaborative and make this happen for our families. Um, and um, it was instrumental in making all that work. Uh, yes, this is um, a ratification of an action already taken, but uh, we felt it was very important to do. And um, so uh, thanks, thanks again to the entire uh, food service staff for making this happen and to Monterey Peninsula Unified for uh, supporting us and getting this going. Thank you. Are there any questions from the board? Christy? No, not at this time, thanks. John Path? No, thank you, no, I'm good. Brian? Uh, nothing for me, thanks. Okay, John Walton? Uh, no question, just a comment. You know, it's just uh, like we were saying, you know, just they're so multifaceted in our district and uh, the food, provisioning and providing it to the community has just been so important, I think, in a time like this when everyone's stressed out and has a real high point for everyone. So I just want to thank uh, Director Lip and her whole team, and I know other people have contributed as well to, uh, to make that happen, you know, uh, since day one. So I really appreciate it. Thank you. Um, okay, we'll open this up for public comment on this contract. We have a comment by um, Patel Patel. Thank you for providing spring break meals. Seeing no other public comment at the moment, we'll go ahead and bring it back to the board for a motion. I move that we accept the contract for services with Monterey Peninsula Unified School District Nutrition Services for spring break meals. I will second that. Okay, I have a motion made by Christy Dawson, second by Brian Swanson. And roll call vote, please. Trustee Crandall? Aye. Trustee Dawson? Aye. Trustee Paff? Aye. Trustee Swanson? Aye. Trustee Walton? Aye. Student Advisory? Aye. Thank you, Pass 5-0. And thank you again to everybody for making that happen for during spring break. Okay, moving on to our last action item is board calendar future meetings. Are, have there been any changes, Dr. Porras, to the calendar? Um, thank you, Madam President. We do have one addition to the calendar. Um, this is going into December. Um, we needed to add one more December meeting, um, December the 10th, uh, in order to accommodate the need for reporting on the first interim. And so um, December is always kind of a little bit of a wonky month because of the, the ed code around the organizational meeting. However, um, we did need to accommodate this one. So uh, we do need action tonight to approve this um, board calendar with the addition of December 10th for the first interim report. So I don't have our calendar in front of me. I'm looking at a, a calendar on my phone. Um, so December 10th would be an additional meeting? Yes. Okay, the third and the 10th? Yes. Okay, and th those are the only meetings for that month because of the break? Yeah. Is that right or is it? No, it's no, the no, 10th and the 17th. 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 10th and 17th. So the 10th and the 17th. That's correct. Yes. Okay, so two meetings in December. I see we instead of meeting on the first Thursday, we meet on the second because we're only having one meeting in December, but now we're having two. Right. We had to accommodate the 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 by the, the ed code around the um organizational meeting and the elections. Um so it all had to happen. Right. those dates are prescribed by ed code, so we had to fit those in correctly. Okay. 
Thank you. Okay. Um, is there any um, comments from the board? Christy? No, thank you. John Path? Well, I circled a number of things on the May 21st meeting, which aren't going to happen. And you might yeah. take a look at that meeting, right? We're not really going to have a retiree reception. Um, we're not going to worry about board member reps for graduation today. Um, Correct. You know, I'm not sure that we're suspending or expelling anybody recently either. But that's another story. So. <laughs> if it's self-reporting, maybe I, I don't know. Yeah. So you might take a look at that for your for the May seven meeting. Correct. Yes. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Trustee Path. I think most of that stuff is going to be loose, and we were going to bring up the issue of the recognition and everything else under future agenda. But thank you. Okay. Brian. Uh, nothing from me. Thank you. Okay. Uh, John Walton. Nothing from me. Okay. I'll open this up for public comment on the calendar. This is board, board calendar meetings. <laughs> I know that's you, Brian. <laughs> Thank you. I think that I like that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> we have a laugh out loud on here. <laughs> All right. Uh, seeing no other public comment here, um, we'll go ahead and come back to the board and I'll make a motion to approve the, the board calendar future meetings as um, amended, adding the uh, December 10th meeting. I'll second that. Okay. Uh, motion made by Debbie Crandall, second by Brian Swanson. Roll call, please. Trustee Crandall? Aye. Trustee Dawson? Aye. Trustee Path? Aye. Trustee Swanson? Aye. Trustee Walton? Aye. Student Advisory? Aye. Thank you. Passed five to zero. Um, okay, moving on to information discussion. Um, our uh, probably least popular, <laughs> but most popular at the time, um, subject, uh, district update on response to COVID-19. Dr. Porras, take it away. Thank you, Madam President. Um, and I'll, I'll actually try to keep this one relatively short. We've been trying to get um, keep uh, uh, providing the uh, updates uh, during the day, um, every day. Some days we don't have anything and we just simply say so. Um, they're still being released on at 11 a.m. and at 3 p.m. from the district and then at 4 p.m. from the sites to their specific families. Um, we had uh, thought about reducing out the 11 a.m. Um, uh, report, but just I think we're going to keep it on the on the schedule and just continue to say if there's nothing there, then there's nothing there. But it uh, I think it helps families just to be able to uh, be a little bit more predictive in terms of when we're going to produce news. Um, and um, so that's kind of that. Those are still happening. Uh, we have uh, a lot going on around us uh, at the California Department of Ed. Uh, at the uh, State uh, Superintendent of Public Instruction's office, as well as in the Governor's office. And um, we've been trying to send the links as we get those, and I'm sure families have been seeing those happen as well. Um, I've also provided in the last update a, um, a link to the uh, Monterey County Office of Education website, where they have a COVID-19 resources link. And so that link will always work for folks if they wanna just check in on the daily update. Um, the news is always somber because they're just reporting how many cases and how many deaths um, and get some other information, but anyone can access that. And, and so if you are interested to please uh, continue looking there. Um, we're grateful that uh, our governor, um, who's really, I have to acknowledge him leading the nation in regards to his responses and, and, and sort of his direction for the schools. Uh, we um, received word again today that they are, um, helping to delay and defer some of those important reports that they are required from schools. For example, the um, local con uh, control accountability plan has now been delayed until next year in December, um, which takes a tremendous weight off our shoulders. Obviously, it's really hard to have um, uh, those reviews when we're in the situation that we're in. Um, but the state is really acknowledging that this is these are different times and uh, trying to help us get through what we need to get through. Um, so I want to acknowledge their work on that. Um, I, I'm, it looks like we'll have the opportunity to join a small task force with the Association of California School Administrators uh, on their Superintendents Council to um, work on um, a committee that's it's kind of called the Reopening Schools Committee. It's going to be working with the um, State Superintendent of Public Instruction, and there'll be a number of us that'll be trying to kind of do that 
task force work around what are some ways that we think we'd be most effective in getting schools back and running. Obviously, we don't know what the fall is going to look like. A lot of unknowns with that. Um, and without trying to be in a panic mode, also understanding that we still may need to deal with some of the um, practices that we're doing, some of the social distancing um, the schedules, all of that. And so we're just trying to take it a step at a time. Um, I want to acknowledge the, the, um, the entire Pacific Grove community, especially the voters, um, who a while back approved Measure A. And um, it is because of that right now that we are where we are in regards to technology and support for our students and families. Um, the fact that we have pretty much devices for our students across the district, um, we're able to provide Wi-Fi hotspots. Um, we are in, in, in a much better place than most districts uh, in our county and our state because Measure A and the, and the guidance that the, the technology committee has given um, has provided us this opportunity. And I, I can't even imagine what it would be like if we didn't have those resources. And there are other uh, districts in our county that are in that position. And so um, very, very grateful for that. And uh, grateful for the entire staff um, who uh, took on the professional development um, of, of learning how to address um, technology education, technology literacy. And um, so very, very grateful for all of that. Um, I think the um, Monterey County Office of Instruction under the leadership of Dr. Gus, Deneen Gus, um, has been superlative. I, I, in our discussions with other uh, districts across the state, again, I think our county is, is leaps ahead of most other counties in regards to education. And um, it's, um, it's notable in, in the work that's coming out of the, uh, the county office and the fact that 24 different school districts are actually all on the same page um, you know, it could be a serious herding cats issue and it's um, people are really just stepping up to the plate. It's pretty remarkable to watch and the needs in Monterey County are so diverse. Um, when you look at Alisal or, or Salinas, um, North Monterey County, and then come over to Pacific Grove and Carmel, it's a very different landscape as you look at it. And yet um, everyone is attempting to help each other out. Um, so really um, kudos to all of that work that's happening and I'll continue to report on that as much as I can. Um, and then uh, the last piece I wanted to add was, uh, I mentioned earlier regarding the food service and, and um, just coming from sort of the background that I've come from growing up, um, it's, it's really difficult sometimes to explain how important the meal service is for uh, a number of our families. Uh, they are, these are, um, we, we served a meal to a, to a family earlier this week um, who are, suffering now loss of jobs for both parents. Um, they are rent has now increased. They don't know how they're gonna pay the rent. Uh, they don't know how they're gonna pay their food uh, and for their children and their family. Uh, they are in the most dire of straits. And um, she was, uh, the family came to us and, and accepted the food and then asked for if they could, have, they could have a little more because of the situation they're in. And um, it spoke volumes to the, the, the need that our families have out there. And sometimes people don't necessarily equate that to Pacific Grove, but we have that need. And so um, uh, kudos to the board for supporting this, this program and, and paying for these meals. It may cost us extra, but it is, it is by far a critical function of what we do. So um, anyway, there's lots of things to go around. We're working very, very hard and diligently in trying to keep ourselves ahead of the game. I appreciate all the feedback that we're getting from the families. Um, and on the tech surveys, the administrative team has been really just on it in terms of helping to get information to us. We meet as an administrative team uh, every day um, and uh, at two o'clock to check in and see how things are going and try to align our programs. So, boy, lots going on, but um, school board and community, um, you should be very, very proud of, of the staff that you have and the, and the support of the families. Um, we're as best as we can be in a good place in, in Pacific Grove and, and uh, just want to say thank you to everybody and thank you to the board. Thank you, Dr. Poros. Um, there's so much going on um, and I appreciate your leadership um, on all of this because um, it just has been so smooth because of that. Um, I'll go ahead and open to the board. We do have some public comments that I I won't, I'll summarize some of them, um, but I'll go ahead and open to the board first. Christy, any comments, <clears throat> questions? You're muted. Okay. There you go. Oh, I just wanted to say that, uh, to reiterate a huge thank you to everybody and uh, even trying to communicate via Zoom 
it's been uh, something everybody's worked so hard at. I feel there's a, a flow going on here. So thanks to everybody and stay home and stay safe. Thank you. John Paff. Ralph, there was some discussion of uh, the state pushing out CalPERS, CalSTRS increases for a year, at least maintaining where we are. Does that come back to you? Uh, yeah, they're still working on we, that uh, has not been wrapped up yet, but there is uh, talk the state of, of trying to put a, a deferral on those in, on those rate increases for at least two years. Um, two years. Yeah, two years. But uh, we'll if we can get one, that'd be great. Uh, but at this point, we still not uh, exactly sure when that will be or how that will go. But I, we keep waiting every day for the word. Thank you. Brian. Um, I just wanted to thank ralph and and his staff for the continued updates i do that i love actually getting one that says there's no no news to, to me right now yeah. that can be like no news is is often the good news of the day too so and and uh but i know that you guys are on top of it uh throughout the entire day and beyond that too i, I know that these days start early and they end late for you and and everybody on board so thank you for that thank you for being there it's good to know that you are thank you uh john walton well i you know i just want to thank again i know we've said it a lot tonight but uh, just reiterate how much i appreciate everyone's hard work and just encourage everyone you know it's, it's tough it's a long haul and uh, it wears everyone down, the kids and the families and uh, the teachers, the administration, I know, but just encourage everyone to keep their heads up and keep working hard. I really appreciate it. Um, and not to get ahead of ourselves, but I think at some point in the coming months before we take our, our summer recess, we, we should probably have a, an agenda item where we talk about what next school year might look like. You know, this one caught us off guard. We couldn't, no one in the world could have seen this coming. Um, but there's some lessons I'm sure we've learned and some things that, you know, I'm sure the teachers and administration and everyone's learned from this. So hopefully um, we have time to reflect on that. I know, I know our primary thing is just to get through the school year and to have as, as good a closure as we can to this school year. But I think we have to start, you know, thinking for the future and, and what may look the same or maybe a little bit different, or maybe some hybrid type, uh, environment in the future if, if that's where we go and, and have plans as best we can for those. So I know everyone will pull together on that and uh, come up with that. So I just want to encourage us to, to look to the future, but be prepared. That's all. Very well said. Thank you, John. So I will go ahead and open up to public comment on this item. Um, while we wait for additional comments, I'll just, um, there have been a few that came in um, during the presentation. Um, Erica Chavez, and um, I want the, anybody that's online here listening to know that this, uh, your comments in full are kept in a log, so we'll see and read all of it. Um, I'm just going to summarize this because it's a little bit on the longer side, um, but she's requesting that we consider um, opening up Measure A sooner rather than our uh, scheduled time because um, some students may need additional technology. So um, I think unless you have something right away to say, Dr. Powers, I think we'll just um, ask um, Director Binder to review that comment and respond in, via email, or how would you like to handle that? Thank you. Thank you, Madam President. Yeah, well, we, um, we just received the letter that was uh, created by the kindergarten teachers at Robert Down um, a little bit before the board meeting this evening. And uh, I know that um, we're working on a response and trying to figure out a protocol. Um, so we can, uh, we'll get to that and, uh, as soon as we can. Okay, yeah, that's, so that's the one, the comment you guys, or uh, correspondence you guys were talking about, I haven't read yet. So um, thank you for that comment, uh, Ms. Chavez. We will get response to that. Uh, moving down here from Buck Roman. Thank you, PG community, for ballot support and parents for all the encouraging messages you have sent to our staff. It is a pleasure to serve you. Um, Erica Chavez, um, as my colleague Julie Kelly stated, let's stop building walls and start building bridges. I'll go ahead and read the rest of this. Uh, we have already been warned by the CDC that COVID-19 is coming back sometime in the next school year. 
this time we have time to prepare and our parents are going to expect us to be prepared when it happens again. Delivery times for devices will continue to increase as we get closer to fall. Time to prepare and order is now. We look forward to the tech committee supporting this endeavor. Thank you for that. We'll definitely be talking about that. Uh, Shane Steinbeck, I'd like to send out appreciation to all of our faculty at all of the sites. Hearing the fantastic work from each site is amazing. Parents who are in attendance who are in attendance here. I have three little ones myself. I know how hard you are working to keep your student motivated. Way to step up, everyone. This is from a public comment from Laurel. As a parent, I wanted to say thank you for your consistent communication and even the email that get that says no news today. It's helpful and comforting. Please continue all the great work and communication you are doing. We appreciate that. We appreciate it. Thank you. Buck Rogeman, um, Forest Grove kindergarten teachers believe that embedded um, instruction in a format that relies on extensive interaction with the device would only serve to increase the amount of screen time for our children. Our teachers believe that developmentally, five and six year old students learn best when they engage with the academic content in hands on manner, in a hands on manner, using manipulatives and learning to write letters and numbers using pencil and paper. Our kindergarten teachers also emphasize the importance of our district following established protocols for determining our methods of instruction, whether they are in classroom or remote. We prefer to meet with our kindergarten colleagues to determine the best distance learning approach for 20 to 21, um, then I guess that means minutes, and then make, uh, con I can never say that word, commensurate, purchases to support this program. Our team would like to see the pro process followed before a decision is made regarding this purchase. Thank you. We would love to work, uh, uh, Erica Chavez, we would love to work forward with our Forest Grove, Forest Grove colleagues to utilize best distance learning practices. Absolutely looking forward to it. Carrie Serpa, Thank you, Mr. Walton. Backwards mapping has never been more necessary. Oh, hello, Kitty. <laughs> we should have several options. Uh, we are mapped out. Thank you all for that. Um, and again, thank you for all your, your hard work and patience with all of this. Okay, um, no other public comment on this. Um, this is a review and unless there's any other questions from the board, we'll go ahead and move on to the next item. Um, which is future agenda items. Um, Dr. Porras. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I just, uh, as uh, was mentioned by Trustee Paff earlier, um, there are a lot of items that are kind of still listed that we know we're not gonna be able to get to at this point based on what's happening. And um, kind of one of those being, of course, the, the annual recognition that we give for um, not only the um, teachers that have been um, lauded by uh, administrative staff and others, as well as the retirement, the retirees, um, we're going to have to obviously push that to another time or figure out a different way of doing that. So um, I think at this point, I'd just like to um, request from the board that any, any, any item that's noted for uh, the remainder of this month and into May um, that re requires a gathering um, that we're going to obviously not have the gathering. And if we can figure out a virtual way to do it, we will. Um, but at this stage of the game, it's uh, going to look a little different than perhaps is listed. And um, and really feel bad about that partially because we were looking forward to celebrating the amazing uh, contributions and donations that a lot of our community members have given to us as well as our staff members. But we'll figure out a creative way to um, do that if not at the end of this year into, uh, into the next school year. Okay. Um, I heard, um, so John Walton, you mentioned um, discussing what next year is gonna look like. Um, did you want that on future agenda, which would be near future? <laughs> Uh, you know, I'll leave it up to, to Ralph when he thinks the time is correct to put that on the agenda. I just, I just want to put that out there. I think, I think we should talk about it uh, before we, we go on recess for the summer. I don't need to really put a date to it at this point. I think there's still lessons to be learned. I think everybody's busy trying to just get to the end of the school year. Um, 
but like I said, I think there'll, there'll probably be a time that becomes obvious where we need to reflect back on what we've learned from this to plan for the future. And as long as we do that uh, before next school year, I think that's fine. I don't, I don't need to put a date to it at this time. Uh, Madam President, if I may, I can just speak to that momentarily. Sure. Um, we, um, we actually have already begun those conversations um, on our daily admin administrative calls. Um, we've already started talking about kind of the transition, number one, between toggling on a in-live, in-person classroom experience to a online, true online learning platform um, that's not, re not really the reactive what we're doing now, but more of a really thoughtful online interactive process. Um, you know, and, and what that looks like and how that plays out and what vendors can help, how Google might work. Uh, we've already begun that conversation a bit. Um, a big chunk of that is going to depend um, on more information that we hope on getting in the next few weeks around what school is going to look like. And um, there's talk of not starting school till after Labor Day. If that happens um, and we start school then and then shut down due to another shelter in place of sorts, um, we've lost a couple of months of school. What does that look like in regards to in-person time versus um, an online platform time? It's a great question. Um, and uh, so the biggest, the biggest hurdle really will be um, how do we transform to a true online learning platform and how do we toggle back and forth with those two? The other piece that had come up in conversation with other county schools has been the um, what, happen, what happens if we have to have social distancing but we still have schools open? And so now you have half the students in a classroom that you had before. Does that mean that we um, trade students off every other day? Um, do we space students out into um, weekly shifts of online learning versus um, in classroom? What does the workload look like for a classroom teacher now where you're trying to drive both platforms? There are just a, a wealth of issues that um, we've already begun discussing, um, not only here locally, but also um, within the county. Um, a lot of the county soups have some greater challenges with high schools of 3,000 students. How in the world do you make that work? So um, I just want to assure you that we have, have already begun that conversation. Um, we haven't gone too blanket wide with it yet because there's just so many unknowns. And we also don't want to overburden everybody by too many what ifs. So um, we will certainly engage the board more as we have a little bit more of an idea of what that, what that plays out like. Um, but I do want to assure you that it is on our radar and we already have begun that conversation. Okay, great, thank you. Um, any other, I guess there's no other future agenda items? So okay. I have a question for Ralph along those lines. You know, the notice that CSBA sent out said uh, Cal 200 lost an important lawsuit for us, but there are other things which are gonna come into play in a hurry. Uh, has the state already started looking at, uh, at things like PE minutes that are legally mandated and how we're gonna get around that? Yep, they have. They've already, um, they're trying to figure out uh, with the advice of the SPI and, and the CDE how that, how that, how such a waiver would look. Um, and in particular, those like community service PE, those inter interactive hours, how does that play out? And they're looking more towards a sort of an honor system with families um, to say, uh, for example, PE, uh, can parents sign off with, yes, we've done a certain amount of physical activity within the kind of the framework of, of standards. So, you know, it's not just walking around, but it's doing calisthenics or, so there's, there, they are playing with that one. Um, the direction is still not coming to us. Um, we've given our input, but we're waiting to hear back. And, and along a similar vein, um, and I know you're going to bring all this back anyway, but uh, our performing arts um, orchestras, choirs, bands, yeah. um, has anybody even tossed that out at this point? Uh, in terms of how to do that? Yeah. Yeah. No. Well, it's been tossed out, and we're just—it's—it's I mean, it's a, its a conundrum. I know. Um, uh, I don't know how we're going to manage that one. No, no one really is okay. sure, other than remotely, and that just doesn't really work. So. Thanks. Okay. Um, thank you all. Um, before we adjourn, um, I do, if, if the board would please bear with me, I, there's three more comments that came in regarding the COVID I would like to read, if, if that's okay. Um, from Kathleen, in response to the iPad tech request, I would just note that not everyone has internet access at home, and those families that are desperately looking for food or are likely to have reduced expenses by not having internet at home. If there, um, 
is efforts in place to fully go distance learning, we have to be aware that not every family has equal access to tech and we should not create further divisions based on narrative that everyone needs a district issued device. Perhaps that survey of what equipment is had at home should be driving factor of who is issued devices. The reality is that there is income, there is an income divide in our district and we all need to work together to ensure that students have equal access. Thank you for that comment. Um, and again, these are all logged, so we will be reviewing those um, after the fact. Um, two more, Mira Youssef, thank you everyone for everything you do for us, we appreciate that. Carolyn Swanson, thank you all for the hard, for the work you are doing for kids who are at high risk. They won't be able to go back to school until there, there is a vaccine or other miraculous remedy. We appreciate you all brainstorming to keep all of our kiddos safe, whether they are high risk or not. Thank you. Thank you all for your comments. Okay, um, with that, um, we will go ahead and adjourn the meeting. I just want to thank all of the, at the present time, 54 par participants on the meeting um, for taking the time to join us and, um, you know, provide your comments. And please, everyone, stay safe. And we will see you again soon. Okay, meeting is adjourned at 8.07. Thank you again. Thank you all. Bye. Thank you.